Lack of recycling has led to massive islands being created in the ocean made of plastic. Containers, bags, soda holders, and all other types of plastic get wrapped around sea life or ingested, leading to their demise. A few individuals, though, have taken it upon themselves to create machines and processes to create something useful from waste plastic. On this episode, we take a look at six roof and pavement tiles made from plastic waste. Coming in at number 6, in Roman's facility, they use a full array of plastic waste to create their products. The first step is to use a shredder, which they have multiple different ones for different applications. Plastic is thrown in on top and comes out shredded in bits on the bottom. The plastic is shredded, which allows it to melt easier and faster. In this facility, they mix the shredded plastic with sand and a dye for the desired color. Once the sand and plastic is mixed together thoroughly, it is added to the melting machine. On the other side is what looks like a big blob of elephant dung, which is weighed to 1.5 kilograms. This blob is then added to the press table. A hydraulic press compacts and heats it at the same time, creating the new plastic tile. It takes 100 pounds of force to compress the tile, and takes about 40 seconds for it to cool. After a bit of trimming, the tile is completed. Roman has been recycling plastic and creating these products since 2003. This Russian citizen cares deeply about the environment and has become a pioneer in the field. Here we see the finished result is strong enough to endure the sand delivery truck driving over the tiles that have been there for multiple years now. Roman and his team produce multiple different styles and colors of tiles for the ground and roof. Coming in at number 5, this recycler of plastic also uses a mixture of sand and plastic to create tiles. Here we see a glob of fresh hot plastic tossed into a hydraulic press. While that's working, more oozing plastic goo comes out of the machine for the next tile. After a minute the press is released, and not a floor tile but a roof tile is created. This rotating disc machine that holds the tiles, called the calibrator, I'm assuming presses and holds the tiles tight so their shape is maintained till they fully cool down, otherwise they won't stack nicely on the roof. After the cycle is complete, the tile is popped and ready to be put on a roof. Fourth on this list is this big blue machine, or the plastic digester. Shredded plastic is dumped in on the top, and crushed rock is mixed in along the side at the same time. Luckily this machine has an exhaust treatment phase, which can't be said for all these machines sadly, as many of them are used in developing countries. The long blue piston presses the mix together resulting in this black, oozing hot plastic rock mix. While still hot, it's pressed into a mold and left to dry.
A variety of different colors and shapes are available from this company. Third on this list is another facility that uses a mix of sand and plastic. At this facility, they stress the use of river sand to properly bond with the plastic. The plastics they take come from all sources. Car radios, gas cans, car bumpers, computer cases, virtually anything. First, the sand is dried out, where the moisture will affect the process. After a quick spin in the mixer, the dry material is added to their furnace. It takes incredible amounts of heat to melt high-density polymer, which is an advantage because after the tiles are made, they won't be able to be melted by a scorching hot summer's day. Two minutes in their hydraulic press is all it takes before the tiles are ready to be cooled for another two minutes. After they're cooled, they'll be taken to the trimming area. Small extra bits and imperfections on the outer rim of the roof tiles are cut off with a knife and the tile is ready to be used. Each tile weighs almost 5 pounds or 2.2 kilograms. Here you can see the durability of them as the boss man jumps up and down on it. These tiles are fire retardant and are poor conductors of heat, not allowing a fire to travel through them. They also don't hold water and being very smooth reduces the likelihood of algae and fungus from growing on them. This concept came from South Africa and has been tested for a dozen years in Uganda. Any plastic waste created or globs of hot plastic that are unable to make it into the press before they solidify are just recycled back to the beginning of the machine. The final result are these beautiful roof tiles that would have likely been plastic floating in the ocean. At number two, we have a more sophisticated machine that uses a mixture of shredded plastic and used engine oil. They're mixed into this drum and spun and heated for a short time. On the other side is a gooey hot mess that comes out of a faucet. No press is used here, just gravity fed into the desired mold until full. They're leveled off on top, much like what is done with wet concrete. Being on the other side of the world as many of these others, this machine produces plastic bricks in the city of Tarlac in the Philippines. These bricks look highly convincing as conventional ones and come in a wide array of shapes. Coming in at number one is WasteAid, a company that helps people turn waste into useful products. This more primitive approach combines plastic bags and fine sand into a metal drum that is heated with firewood. This company only uses LDPE type plastic for their creations, which melts in 20 minutes in this metal barrel. The liquid plastic must be continually stirred, keeping the temperature below 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius, otherwise the plastic will burn. Kind of like the same idea when grandma is making a big pot of chili. Sand is slowly added in until it has the same consistency as cement. The mixture is pressed by hand into a mold and flattened off where it'll solidify over a few minutes time. After two hours drying, the brick is ready to be used. Do inventions like this that help remove plastic from the environment to make useful products give you hope for this ever looming global issue we are facing? If you're interested in starting up one of these businesses of your own, I've left links to all the different companies' videos in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Consider subscribing, and until the next one, have a good one.